my theme music. Hey, welcome to Doby Talk. This is Mark Tamayo from Nemesis Kennels. And it's my pleasure to have on Robert Vasquez. And he will be talking about his dog, Dutchess. So thank you so much, Robert, for joining us. And here is Robert. Hey, what's, what's up, Robert? Hey, how how's it going, going man? Pretty thank good, you for buddy. taking time out to, uh, to join us and talk about your personal experience with the uh, European Doberman. And, uh, you know, talk about a little bit about your history and then tell us about, you know, why you chose the Doberman breed. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, cool. So, so the first question, you know, for us is, uh, and again, you know, I want people to know that, you know, with, um, that you did serve in the Marines, correct? That's right. I did. I served, uh, from 2002 to 06. 2002 to 06. What, what age did you go in? Uh, I was a, did you enlist? Uh, I, you enlisted, uh, right? Yeah, I was, I was 18. And um, I believe back in, oh, it was in 02 when the when the, when the the Twin Towers hit in New York. And uh, I was in welding class uh, at the time when I saw that on TV. And um, that year I enlisted into the Marine Corps. And I believe we invaded in 03. And uh, in 04, I did a tour in Iraq. So, yeah. Wow. That's awesome, man. You know, and again, you know, thank you for your your service. Thank you for your, you know, your your dedication to that. Thank you for, you know, um, you know, protecting our livelihood over here. You know, again, you know, we have a lot of military background in our family and uh, police personnel. So I'm awesome. always, you know, grateful for that. You know, so again, thank you for your service, Robert. Absolutely, Mark. Thank you. Um, so um, I wanted to ask you, with your military background, um, you know, you have a lot of discipline. A lot of structure surrounding the military you know um when you got into the government breed right and uh you keep that same discipline and structure in your dogs yeah you know um with this particular breed you, you really have to uh, have a routine and a structure for these dogs because you know these dogs particularly the european uh dobermans uh they're, they're working dogs and so um with me you know my military background as far as being a marine uh you know with some history on that the doberman is actually known as you know the devil dog so the Correct. original devil dog so um and so yeah you know i always keep things with a timely manner as to you know the time they eat the time they work the time they play and the time to rest you know for these for these dogs for my dogs so Sure. And I think that's best, you know, for the relationship between you and, and, and the dog. Yeah. And, you know, keeping them structured, you know, so they can just, you know, not run wild. You know? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, and as you know, being a high drive European Doberman, you know, they will run wild and ramp it, you know, if you don't have that structure. In them. Oh, yeah. You know, just to, uh, you know, just to share a small short story on that. You know, I remember uh, uh, one morning, you know, my male dog Duke and I had went out on a bike run, and uh, at that time the harness I got him didn't really fit him properly, mm -hmm. and uh, and man he got out of it. And, and thank God it was early in the morning where there was like no cars, no traffic, and uh, and yeah, and he got he got loose. And the reason why he got loose is because he just wanted to be home with our our new uh dog duchess um, yeah kendall and he just wanted to be home with her and, and so he ran home and i was calling him he didn't want he to book it straight home, <laughs> he just went straight home man. Yeah. he's i'll see you dad i'm yeah. out <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome yeah, well man. you know let's talk about a little about your uh your, your your two dobermans well initially before you came to us and found us you already had a male government dude correct and he's back right. in yeah and yeah. Through, through your experience of having duke um you you found the love of the european government correct oh yeah definitely 
And what made you decide to, uh, you know, once you had them, what made you decide to get another one? Uh, I was looking at their at their age difference, and I think I want to say they're about maybe six or seven months apart. Mm -hmm. And because Duchess will be a year, right? Actually, she'll be a year uh, next month. Next yeah, month. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she will be a year. And so, so how old is Duke? So Duke will actually be a year and a half. Uh, okay, so there was a six month separation. Yeah, six, six month difference. Awesome. And um, when I was when I you know when, at the time when my wife and I decided we wanted to get another Doberman, um, I didn't want a big a big gap difference, and so I figured you know what let's do at least a six month uh, you know gap between there so that way uh, we don't start too late and after do the uh, proper training and, and rearing them up. I said you know what they can just the next one can just kind of just slide right in you know. Yeah, and so that was that was the main reason, you know. Awesome. Now, when you when you guys decided to get the, your second Doberman, um, how did you go about looking to uh, to purchase one or to find so, a, a breeder? So before I had got Duke, uh, I did like a ton of, of research. I'd had to say at least months, way months in advance of research, and so mm -hmm. I uh, I found. Uh, a Doberman breeder by the name of Gerald Antoine, and I would watch his his clips and some of his uh, stories on YouTube. And so I reached out to him, and at the time, uh, I don't think he had any reds uh, available or breeding uh -huh. any reds. And so uh, he 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 referred me actually to the kennel, and so he uh, to us. Yeah, and, and I remember his. His exact words were, no, nah, man, I, you know, I put my stamp on it. You know, this is the guy you want to go to. And, and that's how mm -hmm. I came across your kennel. Awesome. Awesome. So when you did find us, um, you know, the communication, you know, that's one of my key is, is having very, you know, transparent communication, you know, being very transparent with my, with my uh, new owners, because I want to ensure that the puppy is well fit for the new owner. How, how did the, you know, the communication, how did all that go with us um, when you came to realize that you wanted to get that new Doberman and then you started, you know, reaching out to us? You know, I, I would have to uh, also uh, speak on that is that um, being able to reach out to you and, and get some feedback uh, was, was awesome. Uh, I remember, not, not to go off topic, but I had reached out to another uh, a Doberman kennel and, and I, I got very little feedback. I got very, I didn't get a response. So I just took it as, you know what, let's just keep pushing. Let's, let's go with a different Kindle. And sure. I, I do greatly appreciate and, and also admire that about how uh, you're able to, uh, to, you know, get back to uh, the customer or, you know, somebody that's interested in buying one of your, one of your puppies from the litter. And so yeah. the, the communication with you was always smooth and, and, and able to, to get in, uh, in contact with you. Sure. And, you know, and I think that's what, what we pride our kennels on is making sure that the, the, the client, the new owner is very comfortable and secure because, you know, as you know, you know, we can speak about this a lot. You know, there's a lot of people out there doing it because of the wrong reasons. Right. right. And, you know, we want to do it for the right reasons. We want to promote, you know, the breed. You know, Absolutely. we want to you know, make sure that we supply, you know, a superior service to our clients and to our, our new owners, and especially all we hold the dog number one, right? Definitely. Um, so that's why, you know, I'm so, again, so transparent, sharing videos, you know, pictures, you know, if you want to do Zoom calls or conference calls because you're not local, you know, I have a lot of East Coast um, clients that, you know, can't keep on flying in and out to check out right. the puppies or stuff like that. So again, you know, I try to be very, as much transparent as I can, you know, so again, they feel secure that they're working with someone that's, you know, reputable, yes, you know, yes. and uh, they feel like, you know, they're going to get a good, healthy puppy in the, in the, you know, in the end. Definitely. So that's awesome. So, you know, I appreciate that. 
and I always appreciate, you know, Gerald always, you know, speaking for us because, you know, again, you know, he's he pretty much got me in this game. And, you know, if you've seen our last podcast, we talked about, you know, building the ultimate stud. So yeah. he's always, you know, uh, tutoring me and what what I need to do to, you know, step up my game and, you know, take it to the next level if I want to get into the stud service or, or whatever. You know, right. any questions I have, you know, we have a good network of people that's always trying to lift up each other and making sure that the dog is always number one. Right. Yeah. So, do you do you, um, do you recommend this type of dog to um, anyone that's maybe looking? Because you know, a lot of people are very visual, and they look on Instagram, they look on Facebook, they see all these dogs doing a lot of good things, and uh, you know, they reach out to people, you know, to breeders, and they say, "Hey, you know, I, I'm deciding to get one of these dogs." Do you yeah. think a new, a new owner, uh, without having any experience? Um, is capable of having a dog like this? Uh, I would have to say it depends on the on the owner's lifestyle and uh, the habits on the you know on the routine as far as like the weekends or even during the day. Uh, what type of lifestyle they live in? And uh, when I say lifestyle, like uh, an active lifestyle, whether you're biking you know running uh an outdoors person or uh, you know if you're just just too tied up in work or or if you're just you know just wanting to be at the party scene then, then no sure this, this, this dog you know is is not for for everyone yeah um, again you know this is not a backyard dog you know um no, you can't just put all. him in the backyard and let him go crazy you know you've got like you said no. you have to have that structure and discipline and you got to be very active, you know, so, you know, that's one of our questions on our questionnaire, you know, what type of lifestyle do you have? You know, are you very active? Because these dogs are going to make you go out and do things, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So, so since you had Duke and now that you have Duchess, how has Duchess um, uh, acclimated to your lifestyle and uh, especially with Duke and your family? You know, when we first got Duchess and she came home you know duke was just amazing with her very gentle and you know welcomed her home and you know also you know even protective of her as well mm -hmm. oh really <laughs> yeah yeah definitely man you know um and she she warmed up it, it didn't take her it didn't take her long i mean with that first night you know she was she was already warmed up to him uh to me and one thing i have to say about duchess is that she's a live wire <laughs> I mean, like <laughs> compared to who she is my that's last right there that's that's my you know my firecracker right there so yes yes uh, you know it didn't it didn't take long for her to really warm up and, and get settled in at the house you know and just to even kind of touch on a little bit about it you know I, I travel quite a bit for work and you know her and duke are are tight you know uh -huh. and so but when we left you know my wife even told me she said that duchess had not been the same since we left that she just didn't really want to eat she was kind of whimpering and she was just looking for duke and i was like wow man i said i felt really bad you know because Mm -hmm. you know, I really don't. Want, I don't want to separate them, you know, because you know we're 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 a team, we're a family, and um, you know we're yeah. a pack, and we go just about everywhere together. You know, even sometimes if I am traveling, everybody's coming. You know? Nice, uh, nice. But but yeah, it, it didn't take long for her to really warm up. Uh, and she, one thing I noticed about her is that she's a very confident dog. Even as a small as a small puppy, when we brought her home, she was already jumping off the sofa, you know, and um problem solving and how to get in and out of the you know the house and uh -huh. you know uh, very highly intelligent dog you know so uh, she warmed up and, and fit right in it didn't take it didn't take long for her to, to fit into the house nice nice now raising one one dog to now raising two <laughs> yeah <laughs> how, how is that going so you know when I first when I first got one, you know, it was it was it wasn't as it was not that bad, you know. 
But when they're together, when we got a second one, we thought, you know, we'll, we'll get one. You know, he needs he needs a mate. You know, he needs somebody to to be with him, right? Her playmate. And so when we, <laughs> a playmate. So when we got her, you know, sometimes, uh, man, they can they can be a handful, you know. Sure. And when I mean a handful is if uh, if they haven't been properly like exercised, you know, they can be a bit. Uh, um, destructive. When I mean destructive, meaning they can get into stuff, you know, and you, you really have to stimulate these dogs, you know, and, um, you know, you have to exercise and work them and just yep. for them not to be so anxious or, you know, you know what yeah. I mean? So, sure, uh, sure. These, these dogs, yeah, these dogs, they, they, they require a lot of attention, you know, and they're what they're known as Velcro dogs. You know, they really yep. want to everywhere you go uh, yeah i always use codependency you know just like humans you know you're right yeah, we're yeah. so codependent on each other you know when when our our uh, our spouse or someone goes away or for business or something like that you're like right. man you know you're you're feeling sick almost yeah <laughs> you know because that separation anxiety you know so yeah. i bet they do have some of that when they leave but i think it's as they grow and as they learn, you know, that separation anxiety kind of diminishes a little, you know, um, it, but they it, do. It, it, yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I was just saying, it, it, you know, it lasted maybe for like a day or two. And then, you know, I, I called and asked and, you know, she was back to herself, and, you know, running, playing, eating. And, you know, it was just just for, for a moment, you know. Uh, but the good thing is, is that uh, that she is she's she's very healthy. You know? Yeah, and she's back to herself again. Good, good, good. Well, that's good. You know, especially I bet they're very happy when they see each other when you get back from business. Oh man, when when <laughs> when I come back into town, you know, my wife's like, "Hey, we got to meet at the park," because they just go crazy, you know. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, give them a half hour, man. They freaking get yeah. you know, get all that, that, that energy out. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, since you know, since you did tell us that you you travel a lot for business. Um, with Duke, um, now how is that? How is that uh, road companionship? You know, um, how is his protection? You know, guarding you in, in certain manners because you probably, you know, like you said, you know, you stay in hotels sometimes, um, and you go to different various yeah. places. How is he he acclimated into those type of uh, situations that you put him in? Duke does very well when it comes to road trips. Um, sometimes he'll come up in the you know, middle console, they'll just lay in the back, go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we go, but if we stop at a gas station, um, you know, he's, he's, he's on guard and just watching and sure. making sure that I'm okay. Yeah. Just, and I wrote down the windows for him and, you know, there's times where maybe if somebody gets too close, you know, he'll kind of growl underneath his breath and just to like, let that person know that, Hey, you know, we're getting too close. Yeah, um, keep your distance. And so, yeah, to keep your distance. Uh, when we get to the hotels, he usually just kind of just sniffs around, you know, and, and makes his own spot where he wants to lay, you know. Um, <laughs> but Duke is a pretty well-rounded dog as far as when it comes to, to travel. So Nice, nice. Now, when you go to work, um, you probably keep him in a crate or, you know, uh, at the hotel or something like that. How is he doing with that? There's times, there's times where I do leave him in his in his in his kennel, uh, uh -huh. not really a crate, but just a uh, uh, just an, like an octagon cage kennel. Oh, like a playpen, and almost. It's almost like a playpen, pretty much. Uh huh. Uh huh. And, uh, and our morning routine is, you know, we go out. He does his business, and he comes in. He has breakfast, and I just leave, you know, water and a little bit of food for him still in his kennel on his bed, some toys sure. and stuff that he can maybe play or chew on. You know the TV and the lights are on, or yeah. depending, you know, depending where I'm at, I may just even take them with me. There've been occasions where I take them with me to work. Nice. And uh, and you know, some of my coworkers, if I don't bring them, they're like, "Hey, man, where, where's Duke? At? Where's Duke? Uh, he, he didn't feel like coming to work today, you know." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he he, does, know, he does good. You know, I come back, or there's, if there's times where I can check on him, you know, during my lunch break, you know, I'll shoot through the hotel and and see how he's doing take him out and and most of the times i mean he's always he's either laid out asleep or, or just you know 
waiting for me you know but sure, uh, sure. He, does, he, he does he does good he does good in the in the hotels awesome and you know and that comes with uh you know socialization early socialization which you probably already you know in, imprinted on him you know doing some obedience training you know yeah. some maybe protection training that you you know you kind of own that um i know you know seen by your your, your instagram and following you you know especially with duchess um i see that you're putting in the work and that's what we always try to promote you know right. to make sure that our owners are putting in the work because you know um you know <laughs> man i'm, I'm gonna be a uh uh what is it called uh repeating myself and a broken record but i always <laughs> say man you gonna get what you put in you know Thanks. you can't expect the dog to do all these things if you don't put the work in right um, exactly. so you need to put that work in and then you'll see the results in the back end um so you know again you know props to you props to all the owners that are putting in the work with their dogs because they're going to see the results right and you, and you know more like there's not a there's not a time where if you know if i take them to the park or just even out in the store somewhere that i don't get compliments on on how well behaved he is nice but the, you know the people don't understand maybe some people may not understand the time and the work that was put in so that he can be well behaved out in public you know and you know be able to you know be well behaved and mannered you know yeah uh, but it is definitely also uh time and work to get yeah you know, them dogs to be able to be obedient sure you know and as you know you know i have a few dogs in my you know in my you know my camp you know my kennels and you know people come over and they say how do you control all these dogs at once and I always tell them, you got to control them individually. Yeah. And once you train them individually, then you can actually control them as a group because each dog has already been trained and structured in their own way. Right. 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 So when you do that and take time for each individual dog, you know, and, and you're starting to know this by raising multiple Dobermans, um, you got to structure them maybe a little differently. But when that structure is in there, they know the basic commands. They know that the, the uh, uh, what you're actually wanting in them, and they're gonna mind. You know, they're gonna follow what you what you you know what you're uh, as you're leading them, right? Exactly. So that's awesome, bro. Um, there's another question that I wanted to uh, to ask you. Now, from the travel companion, you know, um, is there any advice that you know, like feeding, um, anything that you feed them? Uh, that you've seen different in their structure um, that you can recommend to uh, to our viewers? Uh, as to the question, like the type of dog food, is that? Is yeah, that type of dog food. Do you have them on raw? Do you have them on kibble? Um, you know, when you're traveling, um, does he only eat, you know, um, um, a certain amount of kibble or does he eat raw? Because I know it's really hard to have raw diet especially right. when you're traveling or if you're at training or things like that because some trainers won't you know uh, specifically yeah. you know do each person's client's dog specifically so uh, you know just just a little about what you feed you know duchess and, and duke so uh so we feed duke and duchess uh a nutshuck, which is a a dry a dry kibble sure but we also we also throw in some um uh some chicken broth. Uh, nice. Sometimes my wife, she may do uh, homemade chicken and chicken broth and throw it in the, mm -hmm. you know, in the food as well. Um, sure. And we also throw a little bit of uh, dry raw food in there as well. Um, with Duke, he can be kind of picky on uh -huh. what he eats. Uh, Duchess, on the other hand, she has no issues. Thank God that she has no issues on when it comes to feeding, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, but we try to keep it the same and also it's just some add you know some moisture to the to the cable and yeah uh, and you know think things of that sort so yeah and the reason why i brought it up because especially when you're traveling and you're feeding these dogs sometimes you know um, you don't have time to maybe go buy a bag of this go buy a bag of that you know and right. you're feeding them you know maybe i mean i always i never recommend like table scraps and things like that but these oh, dogs yeah, no. tend to have loose stools when you introduce new foods to them too too fast. Right, right, right. right. So sometimes you have to uh, incorporate both foods together 
or like a week if you're going to change one brand to the to the other you know yeah. for, them, for their digestive system in their stomach to actually you know get acclimated to it and then once they move over you know probably about a week doing that then you can actually move over to the new brand um because you know a lot of people ask me about you know loose stools and, and you know giving them new food and i always tell right. them mix your food for at least a week week and a half until they get acclimated and then move them on to the new um he's been okay with with all your travel arrangements and everything good oh yeah you know um i re remember as far as uh back to the food was uh duchess was on taste of the wild i want to say and mm -hmm. she was on for i think at least maybe about six seven months and okay. then we gradually introduced her to the next year uh, the next year. Work, uh food, yeah and uh and and their stool is always solid it, it comes out you know just right and you know awesome. if they have, have ever get blue stool um it could be because we may be adding something a little bit different in there uh, we usually just give them like uh, pumpkin sure uh, pumpkin's awesome and that, that, yeah that kind of helps with their with their bowel movements and stuff like that so yeah we we always you know recommend also <clears throat> excuse me um like prebiotics uh probiotics you know especially like maybe some yogurt um you can add some yogurt some greek yogurt organic and that will kind of help their stomach issues if they do have any stomach issues you know again these dogs like you said they're going to challenge you you know they're going to test you they're going to get into stuff you know sometimes they're going to chew on things that you know may you know, be uncomfortable to their stomach you know um but you know the food is most important um food exercise and you know i always say love but you know we already give that to them you know but you know the food is really really good that you know making sure that we're giving them a premium kibble um right. knowing the fda recommends so we can always make sure that our dogs are staying healthy definitely, definitely. so that's awesome man um so again you know i want to thank you robert you know for taking some time out and uh explaining you know uh some of your history um some of your knowledge you know with our viewers on raising multiple dobermans um at this time i want to actually go over to your uh to your instagram and show your dogs all right so yeah there's, there's you that's an awesome shirt that you're wearing right there yeah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> there's Duke right there, your, your boy. Yeah. And there's Duchess. Oh, yeah. The red. <laughs> right? Yeah. Where was this at? You guys went up for a hike? Yeah. Um, we had went up to the, uh, I want to say the observatory, or just right past the observatory. Um, oh, nice. Near the side. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, now, very, very nice hike. This one right here. There's your girl, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at those eyes. <laughs> yeah, she's beautiful. The ears yes, came yes. out perfect. Yeah, everything looks good. Now you're you were saying a little before we got on that um, since you travel with Duke a little more than Duchess, it seems that Duchess have really took a bond to your wife. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, you know, since my wife originally is from, from California or from the LA area, uh, she actually was able to fly out to Cali and, uh, and, and pick her up. I think I had to work. I was at a uh -huh. town. I think I was in, uh, Mississippi. I was working in Mississippi at the time and Duke and I were in Mississippi. Okay. And so, uh, since she picked her up, uh, since then, and she told me exactly you know how she how she actually slept with her <laughs> she's probably gonna get mad for telling, telling <laughs> you and uh how she just wanted to be right next to her oh know? yeah and every time uh there's yeah, your boy yeah i do just want to say hello <laughs> what's up buddy what's up <laughs> yeah he's good looking yeah thank you and so <laughs> uh, since then duchess has has probably i would say bonded closer closer to my wife uh when we are together she still shows uh affection and love to me and mm -hmm. uh you know we still have that relationship but i'd have to say you know she spends more time obviously with, with my wife than i do awesome and how does your uh, the rest of your family like your dogs 
Are they scared uh, oh, at first when they when when so, they introduce or they're like? <laughs> so the kids, the kids love the dogs, you know. Uh, some of my, some of the adults were a bit nervous, you know, uh -huh. uh, and not sure how you know how the dogs would respond or react to them, but. You know these dogs have excellent temperaments, man. And, you know they can they can really sense you know a, a person's I would say maybe intentions or their or their sure. vibe, you know? their energy. Yep, their energy. You know, and so um, at first, yeah, my, you know some of my family were were a bit nervous, but at, after how they saw they were reacting with with kids, you know, they're like, man, they're really good dogs. And, uh, yeah, very well behaved. You know, sure. And you know, and it goes, that, that's a testament to you guys, you know, doing early socialization because that's the key. You know, I yeah. always say, you know, early socialization with kids, with uh, other dogs, you know, the people in your circle, you know, always try to socialize them uh, with them, you know, kind of regularly because, you know, at all times, they, they, they want to protect you ultimately, you know? Yeah. And so they're always going to stand at guard, you know, by being introduced to new things. Well, that's why you know it's it's great to do those, the socialization, the environmental trainings. You know, because you can't train all the time in your backyard, right? You right, got to right, get out right. there and do environmental training with different things because now they feel a little more comfortable. You know, they're not as skittish when you actually introduce them. You know, because they've already done it for a while, right? True. Right. So you know, again, you know, with with your uh, with your uh, background, structure, and discipline. Um, you know, that's really good, especially for your European governments, you know, because they're so, they're so uh, almost like I said, they're so smart, you know, and again, if okay. you don't put that time in, they're going to get into something. Man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they're going to yeah. get into something. <laughs> yeah, you know, awesome. uh, they were, you know, when I did some research, uh, uh, you know, I had heard that, you know, the Doberman will even try to outsmart its owner, you know. And, you know, I, I've seen it sometimes where they may, uh, if they want something, you know, they'll do, they'll do something to get your attention as to what they want, you know? Yeah. And they, and they have their ways, you know, they're, they're, they're very, very intelligent dogs. Sure. Sure. Well, you know, that goes again, you know, again, you know, but they're so loving, man. And a lot of people don't see that because they don't own them. Right. Or they've got a stigma from it, from, you know, watching television or watching other oh. things, you know, so they have a stigma. But, you know, again, once someone close to them has a Doberman, they totally see that that really what a Doberman's all about. You know, it's yeah. all about the love, the bond, you know, and then again, they're ultimately going to protect you, you know, with, with all their yeah. beings. And, and you know something, Mark, that's that's particularly like why I chose the Doberman, because they know when to turn on and they know when to turn off, you know, yep. when it's, when it's time to work and when it's time to play and then when it's time to just relax and just lounge, you know, lounge with you and just, you know, and then, you know, just be a dog. But, sure. um, that, that's what I really admire about the, uh, the Doberman, you know, um, you know, they just, they have a, uh, a unique, uh, trait to them. Than, sure. Uh, than, than most other dogs, you know, or working working dogs at that for that matter. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, man. Cause you know, when I grew up, my mom had American Dobermans. Okay. And my my dad was in the military. She, he was in uh, in Vietnam. And wow. when he got back, um, you know, he started introducing himself back into the family, and uh, he was like almost play fighting with my mom. You know, you know. And uh, that dog, man, attacked my dad. Wow. <laughs> and I was I was three years old. And man. ever since my dad didn't like Dobermans, man, he was like, <laughs> get rid of that dog, you know? And it was so funny and ironic when we moved from uh, where we were staying with my grandmother when he was enlisted, we right. moved to Glendora. Uh, we happened to get into a house where our neighbor had this humongous red doberman and his name was brutus man. and my dad was like man i can't get away from these dogs <laughs> <laughs> but when when our neighbor don used to take them out and my dad was kind of like you know kind of like you know held off 
by knowing him, he started learning about the breed. He, started, he, he goes, man, that's a nice dog, you know, very cool, very good temperament, you know. So he started yeah. falling in love with them, you know, little by little. But yeah, it was so funny back in the day that that happened. And I remember that story. But yeah, and that's why we love them, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. So, so the last thing I want to ask you, Robert, is um, do you have any advice um, for people when looking for a puppy or an actual breeder? Uh, what your recommendation is? Um, I mean, I know it's about research and things like that. But any other thing that you uh, may recommend to uh, to our viewers to actually when you know as new owners, you know, uh, I would have to say, you know, I I'm nobody to not to deny somebody wanting a dog, but get a dog that's going to fit your lifestyle. And if you do decide to get a Doberman, uh, just make sure that. Um, some of the things that I had looked for particularly were first and foremost was their health, you know, uh, them coming from a good, healthy um, uh, parents or stud or dam. Yeah. And uh, another one was the drive. Um, you know, I, I wanted a dog that was going to be also uh, full of energy and, and ready to work, you know, but also with a good temperament that's going to be good with kids also with other dogs and yeah again knowing when to when to work and you know when to to stand by you know sure uh, sure so i would have to i would have to make those three key points is to uh look into their health if they're health tested yeah um, their temperament and their drive you know i'd have to definitely have to say those three and that uh the breed fits your lifestyle you know sure sure because again, not not these dogs, you know. Again, these dogs are not for everyone, right? Right, correct. So you know, we want to make sure you know, you know, ensure that our viewers understand that you know, don't go off of what everyone else is doing. Make sure if it, it, it fits you, you know. Yeah, definitely. And here yeah. at Nemesis Kennels, we always try to uh, to match up the right you know temperament, the right you know drive for each individual. Because sometimes, even though they have experience with other dogs that do have some drive. You know these these dogs may have that extra drive that they're they're just not used to. Right. Yeah. I right. Would, I would definitely agree with that. And uh, we, you know, again, we want to ensure that you know we promote that that you know it. You know we don't we don't care about the sale. Um, you know it is our business, but you know we ultimately want to make sure that you're happy. You know the dog is healthy, uh, making sure that it's in a good environment um that you guys are, are are well bonded and uh you guys are enjoying each other you know ultimately yeah. yes absolutely mark you yeah, know and uh and i just like to say you know uh and your, your kennel your your dogs your, your pups man they've all been uh amazing amazing dogs and, and puppies you know um thank you thank you every, everything that i that what we wanted we got more out of duchess you know which is out of your kennel and yeah. uh, just just an amazing dog amazing dog well i appreciate that robert i appreciate you know again your service i appreciate your time um stay safe out there you know i know you travel a lot but yes, you know you have backup man someone's watching your oh, sticks yeah. bro yeah. someone's watching your sticks <laughs> <Yeah>. bro <laughs> so that's a, that's a brother in arms right there right just, yeah he is <laughs> <laughs> Well, again, Robert, thank you so much for taking your time out, man. You stay safe out there in Arizona, and uh, we'll right. talk soon. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate